You've been at five schools. Is this five? More, more than that. More than that. How many? <laughs> uh, let's see. Shamrock, Nazareth, Canyon, Centennial, Mumford, uh, Dodson. Six. Which that's really cool because, you know, culture is a buzzword, but it's just how you show up, what you're about. And I'm always interested to see how when coaches move from place to place, does the culture that they have stay the same or do they adapt a little bit from kind of where they're at for what those kids need? So over the years, how has culture changed for you? I think uh, when I was, you know, when I was younger and, and I got my first head job, I didn't know what culture was. I was, I was creating a culture. I just didn't know what it was. And uh, I didn't, you know, when you're young, you, you go to clinics, you want X's and O's. Yeah. And now that I'm older, I, I want to hear people talk about how they run the program. Yeah. But after I kind of figured out what I was doing a little bit, which that took a long time. Uh, and I, since I've had six different jobs, there are some cultures that I went into that it was like, I mean, I'm blowing it up. You know, you just got to change everything. But then there are places where I went into, where I was like, uh, I tell you what, the best program that I ever took over, I think, was uh, Frisco Centennial. Russell Miller was there, and he's a good coach. But man, those kids knew how to work. Yeah, they 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 knew how to be coached hard. You know, the open gym part and the playing in the summer and all that stuff was laid out. And it, and I learned from Russell that help the guy taking your job. You know, you kind of just. You get a job and you're like, well, that's this. But he, man, that guy helped me with everything. And so I I really just kind of, as far as just made it mine with the offense and defense and how I teach skills, I left everything else alone. But I've had jobs before where it's just like, man, uh, these guys are late coming to practice. Uh, one of them was the principal son who just kind of felt like he could walk in at any time. And, uh, you know, guys, I mean, just – you know, not coming to practice, not working hard, you, you, you know, hey, you know, we didn't get this. We're going to line up, run a set of lines. They jogged it. You know, I mean, you just had to to, to change it. But uh, I also learned that, you know, I've been at when I was at Nazareth, man, they 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 demanded excellence. Mm. And so it, I learned pretty quick. I was like, look, man, whatever happens here, I'm going to do this how I want to do it. So that if it doesn't work out, I have no regrets, you know. But I think now I just I'm, I I guess I'm comfortable enough with myself when I come in, uh, like the guy that whose place I took here, he was a good coach. But it's just like I'm just it's just I'm gonna make it mine, you know. And, and we're gonna do things how I want it done. And and there are things that they did well that I did, I left alone. And and I really wish I I you know I think I've heard you know that you only got two or three moves in you in your career, you know, as, as a head coach, because it just takes so much energy. And I was stupid enough to do it six times. <laughs> it just You're so good. Head. You're <laughs> so good that you could double that yeah. number. That's what well, it is. I remember when, when I you know thought about taking this job, I was like, man, I don't know if I have it in me again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And Cause you, it you does take there, a lot. It does take a lot of effort. You, uh, yeah. you get going and you get excited about it and that kind of gets you through it. I think there's a lot of genius in, and I know you'll probably cringe at that word. I, cause, cause again, that's, you're a humble guy that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't take compliments. That, no, but... that, I, I think there's a lot of genius in knowing who you are and how you want things to be done, but also being open to understanding that there are some good things already here that I just don't have to reinvent. Like they've already got yeah. this. So why harp on it? Cause yeah. I imagine like a younger guy that takes over a job, uh, scorch it. Like we're going to, everything that you've ever done is over. This yeah. is how we are now. And possibly if it was a super negative uh, environment or culture before you have to do that, but like you, you've taken over jobs. I remember Russell, like you, they were super organized and good yes. and competitive. Oh, yeah. So like you're taking over a job where he was more organized yeah. than I was. Russell was insane about organization, <laughs> man. I mean, like 
you would walk into the storage room and everything's two inches apart and facing the same way. I mean, he was crazy organized. I think so Nick Sakaris yeah. had a little bit to do that too. He was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nick probably had a lot to do with that. Yeah. Nick was the guy that, you know, we couldn't leave until all the laundry was done. Yep. Right? <laughs> I, I would imagine he, I, I believe, and I want him to hear this. I believe he's one of the hardest working Oh, coaches as far as the yes. time and you know staying up there on saturdays and sundays oh, yeah. and doing things as far as just loving the grind he's the guy man he is um he's one of the best assistants i ever had and he he he's, has a very creative offensive mind you know but man i i had you know i had him and i had uh, laramie schmidt you remember coach schmidt yep i didn't do anything <laughs> Those guys took care of me. They did everything. And uh, it was so nice because you just coached. I mean, I just walked in there and here's the practice plan. Let's go get after it. And, you know, after uh, I think we were together four years and, you know, I mean, well, here's what's funny about Nick. Nick hated the point zone, hated it when he was just hated it. But now and then, and then he goes to Anna and it's like, hey, man, will you come to a clinic with my guy? <laughs> yep. And I think even at, uh, at Braz. Yeah, he Ross, does. Run it a lot. Yeah, I think he does there too. He's so. a big man, big man to man guy. Yeah. So you've been at these different places and you've adjusted the culture, but how does it drive performance in your program? I think, uh, you know, when I was younger, I, I always used to say, you know, and I didn't even know I was talking about culture, but, you know, you sold your kids. This is us and this is not us, you know? And, and I, you know, when I went to the Don Meyer Academy, I got the concept of the notebooks. You know, we have player notebooks. I still do that. And so everything that I feel like is important to our culture, I put in that. And, and so I think what it does is it gives a couple of things. Number one, it gives your kids a, uh, a clear vision, like a vivid picture of what our program is going to look like. And, and then on top of that, I think it, it, it is it, because they have a clear picture and they understand what it's supposed to look like, then it, it becomes compelling, you know, where uh, it, it inspires your players to, to give their best effort because they want to achieve that vision, you know. So I think uh, I think that leads to things like pride in being a member of the team, you know, just pride in the membership of the team and, and, and being committed and, and, and making sacrifices and, and everybody, uh, you know, agreeing to, uh, they, they all, if, I think when you have a good team, whether it's spoken or unspoken, that group of guys comes together and there's an agreement to action, you know, because that you do have that culture, you do have that clear and, and 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 compelling vision for those guys to follow and i think a lot of things come from that you know so uh, uh what's the guy's name jerry kraus that you see sitting on the gonzaga bench I've, he was always at don myers uh clinics and he always said you got to paint the picture and you got to sell the picture hmm. and I, I i believe that you know when you're when you're talking about culture uh and i think you have to be an example of that too but you know, I would not have th – I would have thought, oh, it's what offense you're running. That's how you're going to win, you know. It took me a long time to figure out that uh, it is – it is the, how you're selling it, and, and you better have a relationship with those kids if you're going to coach them hard and have those high expectations and have that vision for your program. Uh, they're – if we use the word love in our program a lot, I tell our kids I love them. Uh, I tell them, you know – I'm going to be hard on you. You're there every day. You're going to hate my guts, but whatever I'm saying is coming from a place of love. It's never personal. Don't ever take it personal. Freshmen always struggle with that. Seniors, yeah. you know, they're like, I ah, didn't mean it, you know. But <laughs> so uh, I, I think there's a direct, you know, culture drives performance. I and and what's funny is we did a study on this when I was at Centennial. We I can't remember the guy's name. If I think of it, I'll email it to you. But we did a culture study and it was we hit a lull there you, We where we kind of had some kids that the culture in our program became 
uh, it, we can't wait to get practical with, so we can go over to his house and, and get on the Xbox and mom's going to fix a big meal and all that was great and everything. But so this guy has all these different types of culture, country club culture, competitive, toxic, uh, you know, and we, 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 I made a questionnaire out for every kid and we discovered that the players returning players said our culture is a country club culture. Mm. Guys will go just hard enough to keep the coaches off their back and they won't compete hard enough to against each other where they hurt each other's feelings. And we identified that and, and we really worked hard on changing the culture. But I think because we gave our players ownership of that and, and, and kind of said, here are the things that we need to change. And, and this is not going to happen unless you guys are the ones doing it. And we changed it. We, we felt like we went from a country club to a competitive culture in a year by because we I thought it was important and we took a couple of days of practice in the spring and that's what we talked about you know it was just those types of things um so I, that's I think, really good that's really good do you would you happen to have that that survey or somewhere or know where we could get it um I I looked for that today because I was I was going to be really smart and show you that I ever actually read a book. Look what but, I did. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but I, I couldn't find it. I, I think I loaned it to somebody, but I'll I'll find it. Okay. Um, but it, it it's cool because it, it not only gives the different cultures, but it gives the traits of the cultures, and it has a questionnaire that comes along with it that you can get. And I changed the questionnaire, but it was it was uh, it was pretty remarkable the things that. Because some of that stuff, man, as a coach, you get those surveys back, and boy, you you kind of have to choke your pride a little bit. You're yeah, like, man, I thought we did a good job of this, and that we do we are not doing a good job of this. And and so, man, that next year, but the thing was, we had some really good leaders that year, and and boy, they they were tired of this. You know, you you keep coach off my back, I'll keep coach off your back. Let's just make it look good, and they didn't want that. And that was the year. Trying to think of who was senior. You made I don't know the Nolan Richie, Dylan Crawford, any of those kids. They were the seniors that year. Um, but yeah, and and then it changed. And those other guys, like John Robbins and and Jonathan Washington, those guys that played for me, they kept that culture. They because they were younger and they saw that that country club stuff, and they didn't want that. So one, well, I think it's really impressive that that you did that because I, I would imagine. Uh, myself many coaches stay away from things like that because once you're confronted with the truth you have to make a choice you have to choose to do something about it or to allow it to stay the same way and so sometimes it's easier just to have your head in the sand and not know and not not confront yourself or your team with that uh i'm just telling you right now coach i'm gonna in the time that we're talking now to when this comes out i need you to find it and uh, and we'll and we'll put it in the show okay. notes because I think that's going to be a really fun thing. For, I'm going to I'll take my guys through it for sure. It was it, it was interesting uh, just because there were things. The thing that I was proud of the most was that uh, every everybody agreed that the expectations and you know kind of the discipline and everything was was very it was it was laid out. Everybody knew what was going to happen. You know. But the the things uh, that that there were two or three things that I can remember. I don't think Nick was there. We did that. Nick would have punched a wall. But <laughs> <laughs> I uh, but I when I remember when I read it, I was like, this is crap. You know, we work on this. We do this. I'll show you. And then uh, but then, you, you know, you get to you kind of let that pass. And you're like, well, I'm, I'm not doing a good job at it. Apparently, yeah. I mean, if I'm sitting here saying that we're we're not just giving it lip service, then I'm I'm teaching it bad, or I'm not getting the message across. So yeah. it hurts your pride a little bit. But I think, but I, I think you're right. It, you know, uh, that uh, what's the guy that was at North Carolina that was a soccer coach that won all those championships? Uh, what, you know, what I'm talking about. Uh, I just North uh, Carolina or Duke. Uh, I think it was North Carolina, and I just there's a one Durant. I put, yeah, I'm putting together a book list from all the guys that I've had on some of their like their top three books that they that they really loved. And one guy, there's a book about that coach. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on it. But he was I remember reading some of his stuff and it was like, you know, if you want to think about what coaching really is, 
you go in there every day and you have to confront every single thing that you don't want to see mm. every day. And that's exhausting. And, uh, and in his, in his words, he was like, when I can't do that anymore, it's time to go, you know, but you, but that is, that's what so I think so exhausting about coaching is you, you have to, do they have to know, I, you know, I, I, I can't, I can't let that slide going back to Jerry Krause. When I heard him talk, I remember he, he always said this every clinic, he said, you get what you accept, you get what you expect and you get what you inspect. I remember that. I I I, uh, I wrote that down today when I was thinking about some of these questions. But that's you know, that's true. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> and it's really not good. easy to do that every day. 